Now in our sixth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ladies and gentlemen, cleaning his glasses. <laughs> ah, you can see the writing down below him, says Steve Kravitz. Hello, Steve. How are you? I'm good. How are you, Alex? No, I'm uh, I'm uh, surviving, you know. I'm just uh, out of it these days because like, you, 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 you take medicine, right? Yes. Yeah. And it, it, medicine... They don't. It, it, I wish they would come out with a medicine that doesn't have side effects. But all of them have side effects. In fact, when you tune into the news and they run a commercial for something, they then give you all the side effects, and you go, "Why should I take that if I'm going to get explosive diarrhea?" You no, know? my favorite is, "Don't take if you're allergic to it." How the fuck do you know if you're allergic <laughs> to it if you don't take it? <laughs> exactly. May cause death. That's always one of them. That's always one of them. May cause fatal injury or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Because they don't, what that is, that whole thing where they they do about 10 seconds of pushing the product and about 50 seconds of the contradictions. And that's all lawyer speak, okay? Oh, yeah. You know, so they're trying to to prevent you from um, uh, suing them. But, you know, you can sue them anyway. What the hell? You can try. But anyways, so no, I mean, I take this one pill that makes me uh, makes me nice. <laughs> it, it's, it, it's for my neuropathy, but it makes me nice. And, and Marjorie goes, did you take your nice pill last night? And I did go, you? no, I didn't take the nice pill last night. Oh, they're going to be mean to me all day, huh? And then I have, if I can't get to sleep using that, it, uh, you take a Xanax instead. And Xanax yeah. makes me like today. I'm loopy. I'm bumping into things, and you know. Well, it's got a long half life. He he's, he 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 zoomed me, and then I hung up on him. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I mean, I pushed the wrong button. I, it's a button I've been pushing for the longest time, but I don't know to push it right. Son of a bitch. Alex, shit happens. So how you doing up there, in Massachusetts? Is it snowy? We had like a an ice storm last night. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we're supposed to get another one tomorrow afternoon. Now, what is an ice storm exactly? I'm from California. We didn't know from ice storms out there. We knew from hard dew. <laughs> <laughs> hard dew, that sounds like the name of a band. Yeah, hard dew. No, really, hard dew. Uh, uh, we would get, like, uh, a frost in the morning on the, on the grass. And that was right. it. And then by uh, 8 o'clock in the morning, it was all melted. Well, here there's plenty of snow on the ground. Yeah. What about New York City? Well, we had snow, but it's being it's dissipating now because the temperatures have gone up, and so it dissipates. Today's beautiful. I was outside already today. It, it's it's very nice. Yeah. Although I hate the fact that you have to get dressed just to go get the mail. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you have to put on a jacket and a hat and some gloves. That's just to go out and get the mail. Yeah. I just got a, an item here on uh, um, uh, on my uh, Alexa, uh, and it was only partially, but it said Rush Limbaugh, controversial, blah, 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 and then it didn't finish the story. And I just assumed the rest of the story is Rush Limbaugh is dead. Yeah, that, that's where I went. Huh? That That's what I would assume also. Yeah. Let me see here. Uh, Echo, what was the notification? Echo, what was the notification? It's not even responding to Echo. Echo, what was the notification? Okay. One new notification. From Alexa News. He's died. NPR. Rush oh, yeah? Yeah. One of the most conservative and controversial voices in the Yeah, media. okay. He died at age 70. Age 70. Do you He's want gone. to hear more about this? No, I don't want to hear more about it. I'm just glad. 
No, uh, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> to check your notifications, visit notifications. Okay, all right, all right, all right. Sh it, it, echo, shut up. That's hey. like my GPS. If I put it in one place, it just gets me to the next place. It just won't stop. Yeah. Rerouting, rerouting, rerouting. <laughs> oh, boy. It won't shut off. Yeah. Uh, I just, uh, you know. Uh, you, you know, he had those uh, cochlear implants. You know what those are? Sure. For, for hearing. And yeah. they're like implanted in your head and then the sound right. goes through the tent. And he's been using those for years. I wonder when he dies if they take them out. <laughs> or, and reuse them? <laughs> yeah, reuse them or whatever. Anyway, I'm being too mean. I'm so sorry that R Rush Limbaugh was, in my opinion, as another broadcaster, a great broadcaster. I didn't agree with his politics, and I didn't agree with his message, uh, but he uh, he was very good at what he did. Oh, yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. I used to listen to him occasionally, and I'd go, gee, he's really good. You know? He's really terrific. So, you know, I, I'm, I'm, in that respect, I'm sorry that his voice was still. I mean, he was 70. That's pretty young. That is pretty young. Well, to me, that's young. Right. You know? I remember my, I always love to tell the story about my mother, and she had a friend of hers who died. My mother was 93. Her friend died at 91. My mother would have, would have turned 90 yesterday. Really? Well, my mother died at 100. Okay, but anyway, she was 93, and her friend was 91. And when she died, my mother said, uh, gee, she was so young. <laughs> You know, there you it's go. All relative. Okay, I get it. She was, uh, she, <laughs> she was too young. It's all relative, you know. So when That's I right. say uh, Rush Limbaugh was young, I'm 81. Yes, he was young. Right. Uh, you know, I mean, he, certainly he did not make it to the the median age of when you know males are supposed to die, which I think is 75, 76, somewhere around in there. So, really? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's much uh, it's much uh, lower for men than it is for women. Women, it's like seventy seven, seventy eight. Right. I know. I know. Women tend to live longer than men. Yeah. Well, I I look at my wife all the time, resenting her <laughs> because she's seven. She's seventy seven, and uh, I'm I'm going. Eh, she, she'll probably outlive me, you know. But then ag then again, who knows? You know, she could be run over by a car that I'm backing out of a driveway. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Uh -huh. I didn't see her. I didn't see her. You know what gets me is you when I put up your name, it says HP test. Yeah, me too. I, I don't can, know why. I can change that. Do you know that? I can do that from here. Let's see. You, let, oh, you want to see me? What name do you want? <laughs> what name do you want? I'll take my name. Your name? Uh, Stephen... Do you have a middle initial? J. <laughs> no, I'll just do Kravitz. Eh, Kravitz. Okay. Now watch what happens. Do you see your Do you see your name on the bottom of the screen? I still see HP test. Okay. Ready? But yeah. um. Oh. There you go. Yeah. Look at that. There I am. There you are. See. Look at that. Yeah. yeah. These are things I can do. I have power over you. Yeah. 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 I'd ask you what's new. But that's a pointless question. That's a pointless question in COVID times. Although I, I finished up my um, last dose of the hepatitis medicine last night. Yeah. So I had blood work done in three months. Yeah. And we'll find out if I'm hepatitis free. Yeah. It, it, usually those things work pretty well. I mean, there was a time when you just, you know, you didn't... Um... Uh, you, you didn't uh, have, uh, weren't able to, to take care of that no. that easily. You know, you if you oh. had hepatitis C, you had hepatitis C, and you had it for life. And now right. it's the thing not... is, the thing is, I had no idea it could lie dormant for forty years. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, gee, and then I could get it any day now, right? If you had it forty years ago. Now, how did you get it? Do you know? Cause yeah, a tattoo. A tattoo? Yeah. Wow. How do you know it was a tattoo? 
because my first tattoo was done in the guy's apartment, and it wasn't the cleanest. Oh, well, then, I, you know, if, yeah. Yeah. But how do you know it was that tattoo that did it? Because the other tattoos uh, later on were in tattoo parlors. I see. But but how do you know that it was tattoo? Didn't you do, did you do intravenous drugs at all? Yes. So how do you know that didn't do it? I don't. See, you really don't know where it came from. No. Uh, how did you first find out that you had hepatitis C? I was in a halfway house. <laughs> I got to tell you, folks, this ki this guy was really fucked up for part of his life. Okay. <laughs> I was in a halfway yeah, house, yeah. and my eyes turned yellow, mm -hmm. and my skin turned yellow, Jonas. Yeah. And that's how I knew. And that was the one and only time I had a breakout. Really? And then it remained dormant up until just a couple of months ago. Wow. Wow. So it, it, it's it, 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 that's that's something. Yeah. 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 Uh, but so, so and when, when it, it was no longer dormant, how did it manifest itself? Uh, I seen a new doctor, and she did blood work, and she said my hepatitis was active. I see. In other words, you wouldn't have known about it if you hadn't had the blood test. Right. That's correct. So then they suggested that you do. You want to get that. <laughs> Uh, no. Uh, you, you. Uh, uh, in other words, then they just say, "Okay, well, we'll take care of it. Just start taking right. these pills, and that's right. it." God, that is so wonderful. You know, when Isn't we think cool? when we think we haven't cured things, it turns out that we actually have. Well, we talked about that before with AIDS. AIDS is all. From what I understand, there is there is no there have been no new incidences of AIDS uh, in the last, I think we wiped out the last incidence of new AIDS or something. It, it It's pretty well gone. Gone. You know, I mean, people I mean, have undetectable. it. Undetectable. Undetectable. They, well, they have these drugs they advertise on TV again, you know, because if you watch the, if you, if you don't watch the news shows, folks, you miss all those wonderful ads for medicines. OK, because they know who their audience is, old farts. All right. right? And so it, I would say three quarters to maybe more than that, maybe 80, 90 percent of the ads on the nighttime 630 news or whenever it's on in your area are for drugs. And, oh, one, yeah. and one of them said um, uh, about AIDS, you know, uh, and it makes you undetectable, right. which means you can't pass it on to others. That's right. So it's not you, gone. It's undetectable. I, it's kind of like having your record expunged. It's still there, but you don't have to say anything about it. What did you do? Can't see you. Right, 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 right. Not that I would know about an expunged record. Well, I don't understand how being undetectable means you can't give it to somebody. Wouldn't you think that in, I mean, we talk about uh, COVID and we say people are non-symptomatic, but they can pass it on to others. Right. Well, right. I mean, right. in this case, you're non-symptomatic, but why can't you pass it on to others? I guess you just can't. Not a doctor. I, I guess that's the science. But anyway, we wiped that out. We wiped out polio. Oh, yeah. Remember polio? That was a big one. I, uh, I had a friend that had polio. Well, all of us had, even if you're of a certain age, you had a friend who had polio. Right. You know, right. you knew some kid in your school or something who who had polio. Right. And, uh, it, it, you know, uh, it, it was a sad disease, too, because it just basically hit kids. It didn't hit adults. There were adults right. that got it. Franklin Delano Roosevelt had it. Right. But it was unusual among adults. It basically plagued kids, and that's what made it so sad. Right. And that's what made it so fearful for like kids like me when I was growing up. My mother wouldn't let me go swimming during the summer because I might be swimming in polio water. I, they didn't know what it was. You right. Know? Right. 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 So, right. Right. So that was uh, that was the, the uh, that was all what that was about, you know. But I uh, um, I just noticed we've already done fourteen minutes here. Jeez, you know, talking to you is like, you know. Calling up an old friend and just saying, how you doing? Right, 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 yeah. right. Yeah. 
I mean, do you uh, do you Zoom friends at all and talk to them that way? Uh, I have friends in California. I Zoom too. Is my mu- my wife has these girlfriends that she's constantly zooming. They're, or they they actually use uh, FaceTime. Right. Is, I, I I I have friends that I use FaceTime with. Yeah. Um, whatever's easiest for people. Right. They, right. They right. Do. Right. But I mean, it it's it's changed the whole way in which we relate to each other, and I bet we keep after the whole COVID thing is over, we keep communicating that way with our friends. Oh, I'm sure. Because we're very used to it. You know? That's right. Uh, but uh, and Zoom is perfect. Zoom works great. Zoom never. I've never had. I can't say one problem with Zoom. No. E- ever. You know, even I and I can get complete morons who know nothing about computers, and I can get them to call me on Zoom. Except Larry Brown. Except Larry. Well, he doesn't have a phone. He doesn't have the equipment. You know. He doesn't have a computer. He has a computer, but are you ready for this? Yeah. It's one of those old ones that you have to hear the thing going. Eh, arr, eh, arr. Oh, yes. They don't. They, they don't have high speed internet in his apartment now if he had an iphone he could just simply do the high speed over the you know the four the four whatever 4g network 5g network right right? but no no he doesn't even have that okay so we never get to see larry brown i just have a picture of him with some stuff swirling around and 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 uh and that's all we ever see of, of larry bubbles brown you know, so. Who was on yesterday? Uh, who was on yesterday? Uh, I have a friend named Phil Meyer who was on yesterday. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, and tonight it'll be you. Well, right now tonight. it'll be you. If people are watching this. And, oh, and let's hope they're watching it. Yeah, let's hope you're watching it. And then uh, let's see here. And then uh, what else? Uh, then uh, then tomorrow will be probably Stephen Pearl, and then Bubbles again on on Friday. Well, there you go. So it's a, it's a, it, it's it's a, it's a week, <laughs> you know. <And> so, so, <clears throat> sometimes I do less of you guys than others. If I add, like, I call Slayton and I do something with Slayton, or right. I do something with Durst. I occasionally call Durst in his right. in his bed and uh, talk to him for a while. You know, oh, yeah, that's our we're we're you know. But uh, I used to do these for 15 minutes, but now we're already up to 17 minutes. Really? Shall we see how long we can go and just not let anybody on this program call? You know. No, we should let people call yeah. and say nice things. Yeah, yeah. They can't call you because you're doing this at a different time than we're doing the show. So. Oh, really? Do you get calls during the show? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, after this, I go to what we call our citizen panel, and I have them call the the uh, Zoom number, and we all sit there talking, you know. Sometimes really? as many as like 12, 13 people at a time, yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. You I should, did not know you that. You should go go to my site, which is gabnet.net, and you can right. see a lot of the programs, yeah. I'll have to check that out. Yeah. Well, listen, uh, you, stay, you stay well, my friend. And you uh, also stay, stay sa- warm. Stay safe. Have you got? You haven't gotten a shot yet, have you? No. You're not eligible yet. I'm eligible in like ten days. Oh, it'll be. Well, you could probably sign up for it now. Well, because you're not going to be able to get it till like uh, oh, I don't know, December of 2025. <laughs> Thanks so much. Well, no, I mean that's the way it is. I, they, they they made me wait. Five and a half weeks for my second shot. I'm not getting my second shot till a week from uh, Saturday. Really? Right. Yeah, but now now they're doing it different. Now when you get your first shot, you get an appointment for your second shot at the same time. I know, but no, but you, they didn't do it for me there. You had to go online and do it. And then for that location, they didn't have anything till five and a half weeks. So... Uh, which I think is a fuck up on their part, to be honest with you, because everybody right. I know, four weeks, they're getting their second shot. So, right. Uh, but I, I'll be happy to get my shot finally, because then I can kiss bats. <laughs> you, know. you can kiss bats. Bats, yeah. Well, that's where it came from. You know. Is that seriously where it came from? Yeah, it came from bats. Yeah, but these things always come from animals somewhere. 
I mean, yeah. uh, and they always come from Asia. Uh, don't blame the Chinese, by the way. It always comes from Asia. Every flu, every flu season, it comes from Asia. And the reason they know what to give you as a flu shot is they look and see what's developing in Asia and what's going to make its way over here by that time. Really? Yeah. So if we kill all the Asians, huh. we'll never Thank have Alex. another case of flu on the planet. But that's where they all start. They all start there. So to call it a Chinese flu, I mean, you, you, who knows? It, the bat may have flown from Vietnam or something. You know, and then the bat, I don't know, bites something and then something else. And you eat that something and then you get the COVID. Is that really how it's yeah, I'm, I'm the new doc, I, I'm the new Dr. Fauci, ladies and gentlemen. Now. Yeah, apparently. Yeah. I had no idea about No, I've bat. known this for years. And I just said, if we know that it's coming from uh, from Asia, why don't we do something about Asian farming or something and try to minimize it? But it all starts with animals. And they pass it on to us. So we all become vegetarians and we kill all the animals on the planet. There you go. That's a solution. I've got, I've got solutions to everything. Just ask me. Okay? Why aren't you in charge? Anyway, we've gone 20 minutes. Let's get out of here so people don't get mad at me. Ladies and all gentlemen, right. look at his name. It's Steve Kravitz. Don't wear it out. Thank you, Steve. Thank you, Alex. Bye -bye. Thanks for listening, folks. Sixth year, this is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Yeah, and there goes Stephen Pearl, ladies. Uh, Stephen Pearl, Stephen Kravitz. Stephen Pearl's tomorrow night, okay? All right, okay? We have these different people. Anyway, so where do we go here? I'm trying to figure this all out now. Are we, uh, are we okay? I guess we're a little bit... Again, we're uh, we're just a little bit uh, behind, kind of a little little lag. I don't know. I, I think I may have solved a part of the lag problem, uh, but uh, we'll find out. But uh, I don't know. All of a sudden, it's uh, it, it, it we have a, a lag here. Uh, this is great. Uh, I can't figure it out. I'm not going to try and figure it out. All right. Okay. I mean, I can always uh, change it by making sure it doesn't lag by going to another, uh, there we go, another, well, yeah, no, that's not off. That's fine, but that's, I'm, I'm going to just, I'm just going to go and try going ahead here. I, I, I just don't like being in a situation where I, I'm lagging all the time and I'm, you know, there's a, anyway, forget it. Forget it. Uh, if need be, I'll just go to another thing here. You don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, this is a problem that happens every night. Maybe I'm going to have to get a really second, good second camera just for uh, this uh, uh, Zoom thing. But let's go to the Zoom panel here uh, as we, uh, as we uh, admit everybody. Uh, and uh, let me see here. I need to do this gallery. There we go. And I think uh, we're uh, we're we're okay now, aren't we? Okay. All right. Okay. There we go. There we go. Okay. We're we're. Uh, I'm gonna just do this. Then I then I don't have to worry about it. Okay. Then my uh, I'll be in sync. Go to the Zoom yeah. panel. Oh, here. no. No. <laughs> Jeff. Jeff. Somebody you got something on. Everybody. Jeff. Uh, and uh, let me see here. Uh, Jeff. Uh, Jeff. Uh, Jeff. Uh, go to. Can you hear me, Jeff? Uh, we're, uh, can you. No, he can't even hear me. Can you hear me, Jeff? Oh, he got it. Or did he? Okay. There no, he didn't. No. There we go. No, he didn't. Oh, we're, boy. We're, uh, there okay. we go again. Something happened yesterday. Huh? Same thing happened yesterday. Yeah, I heard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm going to mute him so we don't have to put up with that. Uh, hello, everybody. How are you this evening? Oh, pretty good. Yeah, yeah, you are? Try, okay. Trying not to have too much, uh, what's that word, schadenfreude, whatever? Schadenfreude? Yeah. 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 Schadenfreude. yeah. I'm I'm trying to avoid that, but I can't help having a little bit with the Limbaugh thing. You know, um, 
back in 1995 mm -hmm. when Jerry Garcia died. Yeah. Uh, Royce Limbaugh's uh, his response to him was mm -hmm. just another dead doper. And then Rush Limbaugh himself got involved in the Oxycontin, yeah. and now just another dead doper. Exactly, because <laughs> he was. But I, there. you know, I, I think I got all the all the mean stuff okay, out of my let system. Me, let I don't want to be too mean. I, I knew this was going to come <laughs> up tonight. Oh yeah, and and, and you brought it up way too early because we could have gone with other light stuff first, well, and then I'm sorry. Gone, yeah, you should be. Okay. Okay. I apologize. Anyway. Well, what 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 would be the light stuff? <laughs> like like the city of New York announced today that the health department uh that they can't get vaccines because most of the plants that have them nobody in the country can get them are in the middle of Texas or the or the middle of the oh. country the midwest yeah and so they can't get the vaccines out to people well you know uh who knows uh, who knows i okay. i'm i uh but you, you got a week it, and a half. It, you don't it, have to worry. Is, oh, here comes Jeff again. Are we going to be okay? No. Okay. How, what are your bets? So. Any bets here? What? 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 what, what Benny what, fixed it. Let me see here. <clears throat> but he's not joining yet. Okay. Um, there he is. Uh, okay. Connect your audio, Jeff. Now. Oh, no, that's not Jeff. It's Pam. <laughs> Jeff, are you okay, <laughs> Jeff? Yeah, I think I am. Yeah, well, yeah there, there we go. Hasn't there she told are. you what to do when that happens? She she figures it out. A little bit. What do you mean a little bit? It's, it's a little the, bit. Here's she what happens. All the time. You've got your browser on because you're watching the show, right? Yeah. Just turn that off. That's what I just did. Yeah, that's what you do. That's all you have to do. It's very simple. Okay. I was almost going to write you today and tell you that. But I figured you got to fix it last night, so that would probably take care of it. And the fact is that no, that wasn't so. So, yeah. but anyway, you know, anyway. <clears throat> so another thing, Thank other you. than the viruses getting stuck in the snow, yeah, mm -hmm. is you just talked to somebody about HIV, <laughs> yeah, and HIV is still going on in this country. It still is going on, but it is not killing people. Treatable. Yeah, it's treatable. It's treatable. It's treatable, it's treatable now. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I agree with Alex. We need to start the show soft. Let let it go into the conversation. Yeah. Then, then oh, we, okay. Okay. You know, this is not a reporter. This is not a news center. Once I said well, right, well, Charlie was snowed in. It's my fault. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, here we go. Sarah Guevara Villalobos. Oh, good. Uh, Harkin's much, gone rogue again. Huh? <laughs> Larkin's yeah. gone rogue again. <laughs> uh, what I don't understand is why oh, I got to do this here, folks, because you can see that. See, that's the the new thing is you can see these things when they come up now. I'm trying a new way of doing this, hoping. I like will... I like the kid better when he came in. <laughs> really? Yeah, I miss him. He was cool. Really? I noticed that Brian hasn't licked a spoon since. No. Okay. No more eating. Let me do this. Here we go. Okay. Are we okay? No, you see, I've got it so that I do it on a on a different thing now, and uh, then I'm in, then I'm in sync. Anyway, or or more in sync. No, I guess I'm not. Geez, this is really terrible. Hold on a second, folks, while I take myself and put myself on my other camera. Okay, there we go, and uh, I'll go there, and I'll go there. Okay, so we get that out of the way. Uh, and, uh, oh, here comes Trucker Steve and Sidekick Rocky. He was here a minute ago, wasn't he? he? I don't know if he was or he wasn't. I think he was trying to get on. And uh, there he is. Okay, where are you tonight, Trucker Steve? Steve, where are you tonight? Can you hear us? Steve? In his oh. truck. Hi, sorry, I got shitty crap. Yeah. Internet. Yeah. I don't know if you can hear me. Yeah, I can hear you okay. Yeah. Uh, so uh, where are you tonight? No, oh, boy. No. On, on the gone. moon, apparently. Apparently. <laughs> oh, well. We'll have to figure it out later. What the hell? Yeah. Anyway. Um, boy, uh, that... Hmm? What? Now, this is why I don't wear my... Where I, why I always wear a hat. Looking at Mr. Larkin's hair, it's like he just woke up. 
looking at Mr. Larkin's hair. He's oh. got a full head of hair, unlike me, though. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Same with Dan's got the spiky thing, COVID spike. I, I yeah. Uh, yeah, I, um, I have thick and graying hair, and my brother is going bald, so I got the the thick head part of the gene pool. So, mm -hmm. well, I Dan, welcome to your thirties. <clears throat> Thirties. <laughs> oh, I wish. <laughs> Thirty. You have the, same, you have the same mother, the same mother and father, your brother. Yeah. Really? Huh? Yeah, we 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 were a pretty uh, old fashioned uh, nuclear family, <laughs> in, in yeah. back in the old days, but they're gone. Yeah. So. Hmm. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I I don't know why I'm out of sync i can't i can't figure this one out i thought i had it solved today mm. uh, and uh it apparently is not true i don't have it solved today so what have you i mm. i give up i give up maybe i'll stop doing this show i'm tired of this you know i'm tired of the technology and nothing working right and uh, you know i thought i had this problem solved but i didn't and so i've got to go to this other camera which is not the good camera, uh, but uh, what the hell? I'll go to that camera and uh, stick with it. And uh, it's Thre not threatening to quit is probably good for your numbers, right? No, it's, uh, <laughs> no. If I quit, it would be good for my numbers. <laughs> well, no, you keep you got to keep threatening to quit. That's the thing. You build the anticipation. Any show could be the last one. You gotta, you know. Yeah, well, I did they do that? Did they do that in radio. What? Where people would go on long vacations and they would play it up like that they got suspended or something. Uh, it, well, sometimes they would do that. Yeah, they would fire people as uh -huh. uh, as a publicity stunt. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, and uh, I, uh, I I I I never got fired as a publicity stunt. I got fired. You know, uh, and I wouldn't go for that as a publicity stunt. Part of the, the downside of that was you would get fired, okay, uh -huh. and then all anybody would remember is you got fired, and one day they're saying, whatever became of Alex Bennett, even though you're still back on the air, you know. <laughs> so that, uh, that, uh, that, uh, that changed everything. But anyway... Um, I, I, I think I'm going to have to get myself another one of these same cameras that I've got to just deal with the, uh, with the zoom, uh, and not have it go through the video that's also working on the, on the, the, uh, switcher that I have here. So it's, it's a pain in the ass because this camera doesn't look bad, does it? No, oh, okay. no. it's not as good as the other one, but no, you look like yeah, you have gray hair. Hmm? You look like you have some gray hair on your face. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, uh, let's okay. Let's talk about Rush Limbaugh, and some of you are going to be a little upset by this, by what I have to say. Uh, I'm sad to see Rush go because I don't wish anybody dead. Okay, and I don't revel over the death of of anyone. Oh, maybe there are a few people. Hitler, I think I wouldn't have mourned. Uh, Trump. Joseph Stalin, a few people like that. Trump, no, I don't want Trump to die. I mean, I don't want anybody to die. I don't want to <laughs> die, and so therefore I shouldn't want anybody else to die. I'd like to Trump to have a long life yeah. in prison. <laughs> but let me, yeah, a long life in prison is fine yeah. with me, and I think that would mm -hmm. be uh, be just, okay? Yeah. But the point is that uh, I, uh, I, I honestly believe that in the case of Rush, uh, I know of no maybe better broadcaster than Rush Limbaugh. Mm -hmm. uh, as a broadcaster myself, when I look at somebody else do the work that I do, and he does it with exceptional uh, virtuosity, uh, I have to admire that, okay, as a talent and as an ability. <clears throat> and if there was a talk, a talk show host that was ever a great talk show host, it's Rush Limbaugh. Now, that doesn't mean I agree with anything yeah. he ever said. Absolutely. But the way in which he did it and the virtuosity he used to achieve it um, was uh, pretty amazing. I would listen to him sometimes and go, wow, he's good. You know, and I wasn't I wasn't l listening to him <clears throat> and what he was saying. I was listening to as how he was saying it. 
and how he was communicating it. Uh, I think he may be the best talk show host there ever was. Now, let me, let me add this. Years ago, there was a comedian, I've told this story before, by the name of Stepan Fetchett. He was a very good vaudeville comic who went into mm -hmm. movies. And he became that stereotype of the black, scared guy in movies. You know, feats don't mm -hmm. fail me now, that whole routine. And everybody went, well, he stereotyped blacks. But he didn't stereotype blacks. You know who stereotyped blacks? Names you don't remember, like Mantan Moreland. Um, and uh, who was the other guy? I'm trying to remember. The, uh, there was another guy in that, in that category as well. Because they all imitated Mant uh, they, oh, uh, uh, Mantan Moreland. Who was the other guy? Damn it. I, I can't remember him now. Uh, but they uh, uh, were all imitating uh, Stephen Fetchett. Because mm -hmm. he was so successful at what he did. And so all these people came along and created the stereotype. If it had only been step and fetch it, it wouldn't have been a stereotype. Do you get what I'm saying? Was uh, step and fetch it, did he come from the Amos and Andy show? No, 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 no. Step and fetch uh, it goes back to the 20s, the 20s okay. vaudeville and so on. Okay. Uh, and uh, 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 consequently... Uh, if it only been step and fetch it, then you wouldn't have had that kind of situation where you, where you said, oh, he stereotyped blacks. No, he didn't stereotype blacks at all. And um, uh, so that, that's, um, uh, and that's the way I feel about Rush. Rush didn't cause the problem. What ca caused the problem were the Hannity's and the Beck's and all the people that came after him that tried to imitate his act. And they created the problem. If it were just Rush, and he died today, we'd all gone, well, I didn't agree with the guy, but boy, was he fun to listen to. You know? <laughs> and that's, that's the problem. Uh, don't blame Rush for mm. what Hannity and all those other guys did in trying to capitalize on what Rush was doing. Yes, Dan? Well, let me, let me kind of add on this. I remember when I was... I would listen to Rush all the time in the early 90s. It was a very entertaining show, like everything you said about, you know, very engaging broadcaster. There were times that he wouldn't take a call for his entire show, I remember. Yeah. And but and his tongue was kind of in his cheek the whole time, you know? Yeah. Back in the early days. But then I think after the Handies and everything else, he started buying into his own bullshit. You know what I mean? Right. Rush did. Well, I don't he know. He took himself too seriously. I, he, I don't know. It may have been that he eventually did. Um, uh, sometimes Power it corrupted him. Huh? He got powerful. Yeah. It, you know, it, it, when he started, it was just kind of a joke. Mm -hmm. But when I remember first hearing him, I mean, I've been a liberal all my life. So I, you know, anytime I hear any kind of comedy right wing stuff even when it first came around i thought that's this is dangerous you know because he, he wasn't serious mm -hmm. but then he got power and then he got really scary when he got power i think well i think maybe that's something you perceived yeah probably. i think you perceived that well, because remember that tv show he had it was a bomb it, it, it bombed but it bombed for five years yeah, it was well, lasted the TV five, show? Years, huge five years. Five years. No, I, I thought I, it was only I, on for like... I looked it up <coughs> today. Five years. Yeah. Five oh, years. Shit. Yep. Rush was popular in the mid nineties. He was big. He also you yeah. also forget that he became a, a commentator on Monday night football. Yeah, for like a week or two. No, for Four about weeks. a year until he said something that they yeah, didn't he said want. The that black quarterbacks do well. <laughs> yeah. Something I don't know, but yeah. he, he got into trouble. And, McNabb, I think what yeah. they what they were waiting for is a problem with him. You know? Yeah, I mean, but all I'm saying is is that that uh, uh, I always found him incredibly entertaining to listen to. In later years, I as you say, I think he got a little <coughs> too bought into his act a little too yeah. much. But what would he didn't, say about you, Alex? What? What would he say about you? I don't think he would say anything about me. I don't think he even oh. knew I existed. No. You, know? you never met him, I don't think, right? No, I never met Rush. Uh, 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 oh, here comes James Lee from Hawaii. What do you know? Hmm. 
I, I hope it's James Lee and not somebody <coughs> pretending to be James Lee who's going to show some naked people dancing. Hi, James. How are you? There he is. Turn on your audio. Connect your audio. Connect your audio, yeah. James. Anybody you uh, ever talk to Renee? No. You, you don't hear from Renee at all, do you, James? What would he say about you? I don't think he would. Oh, say. oh no. <laughs> Same thing. Oh, God. <laughs> James is now. <laughs> no, I never met Rush. Oh, well, I'll, I'll listen to the show. This is... Uh, well, we can listen James, back turn ourselves. off your yeah. uh, turn off the audio from the show. Okay. Pretending to be James Lee. Hang on, let me uh, let me. Okay. Uh, 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 what is this? You know, this is, Alex, is this some kind uh, of? Inf I test my audio and video before the show even starts. Is this some kind of an infection that has happened over the last week? Is this is worse than coronavirus? The new yeah. virus. Yeah. The new virus. Yeah, he, he, he said something about McNabb. McNabb about you know, how his, yeah. he was overrated as a quarterback because he was yeah. black. Yeah. 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 Was that it? Trying yeah, I'm an Eagles team. fan, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you were bothered by that. Uh, whatever. Yeah. But, you know, I mean, uh, uh, this is, uh, um, you know, the, 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 he, he, he was, he, he was uh, not a big problem. Uh, he, but he had his he had his faults. Okay, uh, he was a racist. Hmm? He was a racist. I I don't know that he was a racist. I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't go along with that argument. You know, I, probably, but not you know not as overtly as a lot of people may think. He, he was only a racist. He, he, he was only a racist in as much as he was white. You know, um, well, he, the, uh, you know so. When he was playing the Obama, the friendly Negro song or something like that. Was he doing something like that? I don't know. You know, I mean, yeah. we could. We One could. of his comedy things. And then he did that comedy thing about Ted Kennedy philandering. When he was the philanderer, he had three or four wives. Kennedy only had I mean, like one or two. Yeah. Well, the fact he had three or four wives doesn't mean you philandered. It just meant you had three or four wives. I had four wives and I did right. philander. Well, but, so, yeah, you know. but. <laughs> Yeah, but Kennedy didn't. Kennedy, mm -hmm. I mean, Ted Kennedy, you know, he wasn't. He didn't, he never didn't have a bunch of girlfriends. Was, yeah. Yeah. I think he had uh, one wife, and she she died or something. Then he got married again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I mean, I I think at the end of the day, I can feel pretty comfortable in saying that without Rush and all the people who copied Rush, that Trump never would have been president. That whole kind of. Yeah. Sure. That whole yeah, but, but the movement fact, of conservatism. But, 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 no, but the point is, the point is, the point, the point is, they did happen, and yeah. they did predominate the airwaves. Yes, because there was a philosophy going on out there at the time that, uh, for instance, there was a guy who ran Clear Channel, which had the most stations in the country, and later became iHeart Radio, mm -hmm. and the guy who was in charge of their talk programming believed that. Talk radio was defined as conservative talk. Yeah. And so he hired nothing but conservatives. He had, uh, he had, uh, yeah, you know, that... he had Beck, he had uh, Hannity, uh, he had, uh, you know, all these mm. people, Levin, all of them. Yeah. And, and, and hmm? the stations are 100% conservative right down the line. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he didn't really like, for instance, I was working in San Francisco at a Clear Channel station. He came into town. He heard me, and all he had to say to the general manager was, is he kidding? <laughs> because I was very much to the left. Right. And, and the next thing I know, I was gone. You know? I mean, yeah. uh, so, I mean, don't, don't blame Rush for that. Rush just simply found, see, here's what Rush found out. Rush came in at a time where he had a thing called the, uh, 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 what was it? Oh, he had to give equal time. It was a, it was an equal time thing. Fairness doctrine. Fairness doctrine. Yeah, yeah. And it, it, and it, with the fairness doctrine, you you couldn't just, uh, 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 you know, have your opinion without having someone else right. come on with an yeah. alternative opinion. Yeah, you couldn't uh, have a wall to wall conservative station. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, uh, you had to bring in somebody w of an equal opinion, or you had to have somebody on the station who was of that other view to counter <clears throat> your view. 
Well, when they did away with that, Rush saw his opportunity to go to all conservative radio. No opinion on the other side. Mm. And he exploited that, and he saw the opportunity, and he took it, and he became huge. Yeah, okay. it, was, it was a year after the Fairness yeah. Doctrine was struck down that Rush Limbaugh well, when became... When Rush first hit the uh, airwaves, nice you would not turn on the radio and necessarily hear any 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 uh, right-wingers. Right. I, I know that I worked at a station here in New York, WMCA, where I was very much the leftist hippie, and Bob Grant, who was also on the same station with right. me, was the right-wing hippie. I don't know he was a hippie was the right winger yeah. and and we had all we had right wingers we had left wingers we had middle of the rotors i mean right. it yeah. nothing was the talk radio wasn't being defined as being conservative it was when rush was so successful at it that it became that and other people wanted to capitalize on what rush was doing so if they want if you want to capitalize on somebody because he's doing so well that guy must be pretty damn good you know, and got across what oh, yeah. he had to get across. Hi there, uh, Mr. Lee. How are you? Fine. Is there any feedback on my audio now? No, no, no. You okay, just... yeah. When you're talking about Rush Limbaugh, didn't he start out in Sacramento? Yeah. Well, he... uh, I remember Owen wow. Spann on KGO. Hmm. And uh, back in the, I guess, 70s and 80s, yeah. What about Owen Spann? Yeah, he w well, he wasn't a right winger. He was, you know. Owen Spann was an asshole. Well, yeah. <laughs> one of your competitors. <laughs> no, he's not. wasn't He wasn't a competitor. I see. He didn't do I what I do, but I, I, I just found him. I don't know. He was just. He was an asshole. Believe me. <laughs> Take it from me. He absolutely was an asshole. Uh, I don't want to change the subject a little bit, but I just had my COVID. You know, I'm an old man too. You know, over seventy five. Mm -hmm. So out mm -hmm. here in Hawaii with Kaiser, you know, over seventy five, we're having our. Uh, Moderna shots, the uh, one you don't have to freeze, the vaccine. Right, that's what I got. And interestingly enough, here at Kaiser, in on the Big Island in, in Hilo, mm -hmm. it was all women patients. There were only three men that hour I went up there. There were 30 of us that got the shots. So I asked a doctor, where are the women? You know what they said? They're all dead. There were 80 and 90-year-old widows. Wow. There were two retired plantation workers, uh, Okinawan Japanese Americans in their 80s. These were men. And then it was me. I'm 78. That was it. <laughs> hey, we're dying. We're dropping like flies, Mr. Bennett. <laughs> well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's 65 and over. There must have been some 65 year old women. No, this is women. 75. Oh, they're 75. They're limiting it to 75 because everywhere else in the country it's 65. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I I was originally 75. Was was the requirement? Yeah. Yeah. And then it, then it changed to 65, which is where it is now. Yeah. And now they're adding a whole bunch of other people into it, but they haven't got any vaccine. Yeah. In Hawaii, they're only doing 75 and over right now. I mean, I never can, a I can't figure that one out. You know? Yeah. 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 Exactly. They'll just <laughs> delay people. Huh? What? They will just delay people farther yeah, out. They will delay people, but I mean, you know, I hear about our governor going, and we just opened up uh, Yankee Stadium, and we're going to go out in Mets Stadium, and we're going to do this with that, and we're going to open up this. And oh, by the way, <laughs> if you've got some kind of comorbidity, you're on the list now. And if you're, <laughs> if you're, uh, if you uh, you know, like using wax lips, you're on the list now. <laughs> I mean, and I'm going, okay, everybody's on the list. Where are you going to get the vaccine? vaccine from right it, we had no issue today so we did the <clears throat> we went to a, a levi stadium so that's the largest one in california they're doing fifteen thousand a day and we were there they closed at six we were there like a 5 30 for appointment or 5 30 appointment mm -hmm. and they were counting people in line because they were only flying out those so it was like 10 minutes outside the stadium and by the time we got in it was like another 10 minute but the 10 minute wait inside was because they were waiting for stuff to thaw out because they only thaw out so many per, you know, Which how many they have in line. I understand so you, oh, the vaccinators, Moderna? they have a quota. They got to hit at least 30 patients in an hour. Mm. That, that's less than two minutes a patient. Well, you they, come down the line, they, they hit you with a needle, give you the Band-Aid and sign your shot record. Ours is about five people, is it? Five appointments every every 10 minutes? Something like that. The but local they got to bang them in and, and out. 
They're using a 21 gauge syringe out here in Hawaii, which is a very thin needle. And some of the uh, retired plantation workers, the, the gentlemen in their mm -hmm. 80s, they're such tough guys who wants to work in the, in the fields. They got calluses on their shoulders from all that work <laughs> 30, 40 years ago. They couldn't put the needle in them. The nurses were struggling to punch into the skin, so they had to use a larger 18 gauge. That's like a you know an ice pick. <laughs> oh, <gee>. <laughs> <laughs> and you know I these heard. guys are tough, oh. gentlemen. They don't they go they go anti. Is that the best you could do? <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, it's well. amazing, you know. These guys are so tough. It's amazing. They hardly have any gray hair. They're five foot even, but tough as nails. Have you gotten <laughs> your second shot yet, Alan? Me? Oh yeah, I got it a week ago uh, Monday. What? What? Okay. What was it? Pfizer. Pfizer. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Because uh, Pfizer, the the country is using uh, like uh, seventy five percent Pfizer, fifty percent Moderna for some reason. Did you get they a little bit of a headache? There. No. Uh, what, what were you going to say, Dan? Oh, I was just going to ask. I've been hearing that the second shot is like a real doozy, but yeah. I don't understand why. Because it's how old are you, Dan? Dan, how old are you? I'm 51, so I'm sure I'll be fine. So you you'll probably be fine. The the cutoff for Moderna is 55, and oh. uh, I mean uh, Pfizer's 55 and 65 for Moderna. <clears throat> the people above that age don't get much side effects for some reason. Okay. I don't know. That's just the science. Is it younger people so that get You the, probably won't get is much. It young, I, yeah, I'm, yeah, they make you sit uh, after. It was in a gymnasium, so they yeah, make you I had to 15 sit minutes. 15 minutes. Do the, do the yeah. younger okay. people do the younger people get more side effects than the older people? Is that what yes, it is? Yes, be, because their uh, their immune system is more active than ours. <laughs> so my 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 stepfather's wife who my stepfather passed away last year but so we're very close so she lives in palm springs she said that she had the second moderna vaccine yesterday since 11 30 last night she's had chills shakes fatigue and nausea she rarely gets sick she's very very healthy i don't you know i i i'll bet you that in in a few months they're gonna say the people that get moderna I don't know. I don't know anybody on Pfizer that's had much of. I had a little bit of sore muscles on Pfizer the second time, first time, nothing. Everybody I know that's having side effects has got Moderna. I don't understand it. Wow. That's a different technology. No, it's the same technology. No, Moderna is the mRNA. mRNA. And the other one is just like um, the Pfizer. It's like they're shooting an actual. Uh, a dead virus India. No, you're wrong. I think they're both the same. They're oh, both yeah? the same. I yep. think so, yeah. They're both the same technology. Go look it up, John. So why is it that One it's of a them, different there's three of them out there, right? Thermodynamic problem. Only two so far. Yeah, only so two out there? You're, you're, only there's two. Yeah, Johnson and Johnson got same. pushed out. Yeah, That's Johnson and Johnson got Johnson pushed out. Johnson and Johnson is not the uh, mRNA. Correct. Yeah, about yes, Johnson correct. Johnson. Let's just talk about Pfizer and, and the other one. Okay, what was your question? They're at Sorry, different no. temperatures. Oh. Yeah, yeah. So how could you say it's not the same? I mean, you, you said it, it's identical. I don't agree with that. They're not but, identical. However, they did say a while back that if you had to, you could mix them. The first shot could be your... Pfizer and your second could be Moderna. They don't, they don't recommend it. They don't so recommend it. At the beginning. At the beginning. Yeah. 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 So, at the beginning, they were saying it was possible. But. Yeah. So, yeah, the, the mRNA vaccines need to be super cold. The the Pfizer needs to be like minus 90. Mm -hmm. And then they add saline solution to the bottle or something like that. And then they have six hours at room temperature after they add the saline, break the seal of the bottle uh -huh. to get it in people's arms. But that's going to happen in five minutes because it's only five per bottle. And then Moderna needs to be at like minus eight degrees mm -hmm. Fahrenheit. Yeah. And the same thing, but they get six shots out of their bottle. But uh, I, I don't know. It's a bigger bottle, I guess, or something. I haven't seen the Moderna bottle. Yeah. Uh, but, but but yeah, they're, 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 they're the new mRNA or, it, or whatever it is. John, look it up. You'll see it. Yeah. Well, here they're we are, very, here we are, they're very here, like each other. Here we are talking about uh, um, 
science uh, about, about the about the virus again uh mm-hmm. you know i mean uh, i quite frankly i think in, 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 overall right now it's a big cluster fuck oh, I, yeah. I, you know they don't know who to give it to first they don't know who to give it through to second i mean it it's just it's ridiculous you know california has been really good though I mean, I, I'll say that everything that I've heard from Southern California, my friends down there in L.A., and then everything that my friends have gone through here, mm-hmm. the the smaller area, like the Valley Med that's over here, the hospital, mm-hmm. they was taking two weeks for for an appointment, but then Levi Stadium was like three days. So, well, does how Levi long? Stadium use a Moderna or Pfizer? They're using both. So they you you get your thing, and either you're going downstairs or upstairs, depends on mm-hmm. which one. Yeah. Uh, uh, oh, they uh, make you get out of your car. Shame on them, Mr. Lee. Yeah, how, I was wearing sweats. How, I thought that it was drive through. <laughs> Mr. Lee, how how long did it take you to get an appointment? Pretty fast. Uh, I I went. We went. Uh, I I went online and uh, I got it right away within you know within a week, and uh, you know I, I was scheduled real quick. And you know the my my follow up will be you know a month from now. Yeah. Uh, so you got a lot of people. A lot of people problem here, uh, Mr. Bennett. A lot of seniors, they're not very good with computers. Mm-hmm. And uh, here, uh, Kaiser in Hawaii, they want everybody to, you know, go online at kp.org. Mm-hmm. And a lot of the seniors, you know, they, they need to talk to someone on the phone. Yeah. Call auntie, yeah. call uncle. And the call center is like, you know, in, in Arizona or some damn place. Right, right. right. So yeah. there's, a, no... there's a lot of cultural issues here, too, that are going on. We have these extended families. We have many people from the Marshall Islands, Tahiti, uh, uh, the uh, the areas of uh, Okinawa, uh, and uh, there's a lot of the, the the health department people are you know really trying to dispel everyone's superstitions and all that kind mm-hmm. of stuff because there's still a lot of superstition there. You know, it sounds crazy, gentlemen, but if you go to the hospital, that's where you die. Mm-hmm. Sounds crazy. But yeah, that yeah, stigma is still around, unfortunately. Yeah, yes. that's. Yeah, I remember my 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 uh, forebears had a lot of that kind of. They had COVID. No, that it's like that. That's a sense of uh, you know, hospitals the place. Yeah, where you're hospitalization. Going to die. Oh, I see what you mean. Okay. Yeah, like an old tradition kind. Of well, thing. they're having trouble with a lot of. At least here in New York, they're having trouble with a lot of, uh, uh, especially the. Um, what do you call workers, the um, uh, nursing home workers, who are refusing to take the shot. And they can't figure out why. They're doing it here in California, too. Yeah. And um, and then they're going, uh, the blacks are dying at a rate of three and a half times that of whites. That's horrible. But part of the reason is they're not getting the shot. That's first That's right. of all. Yeah, and, they and, got the memories of... Uh, Tuskegee yeah, yeah but you know, I, I, I don't buy that Tuskegee I argument, and I'll tell you why. Because they, uh, when did Tuskegee happen? A hundred years ago. A hundred years ago, something not like that. Years Some ridiculous ago. amount of time. The people alive today are not particularly uh, 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 terrified because of the Tuskegee experiments. Okay? I agree. It's an excuse. Well, yeah. I I mean, I I know I I have. Um, you know, some black friends who like, I'm surprised what they'll post on Facebook. It's like, this is the kind of stuff I see from the wackos on the right. But Mm -hmm. you know, I've, I've seen the same kind of posts and I'm, and then the only thing I can come up with is, you know, they've been told throughout their lives that, you know, they're going to try to, you know, a lot like the MAGA crowd is like, they're going to track in whatever with the vaccine and blah, blah, blah. So I think, I think if they had black community leaders, doctors nurses something like right. that come out and tell them it's okay oh yeah um they, they get a lot uh, more in los angeles it's the epicenter for the past couple m- months or yeah. weeks or whatever with COVID around the country and uh, dr doom was talking about that last week before the snowstorm hit um but the the reason most of the people that are getting it are latinos it, it, los angeles has got a lot of them but <clears throat> They're they're afraid of of going to medical because they're they've been told by Trump people or something that if you're Latino and you're undocumented and you go in they're gonna kick you back to Mexico yeah. or whatever which is 
just not the case. Yeah, right. but that's not the, the but, but 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 the question of why blacks uh, are getting it disproportionately to whites. I think a lot of know. it has to do with the a the reluctance to get the the the, um, the vaccine the uh, okay. what do you call it, the vaccine, the reluctance to uh, wear masks. I mean, I can say for living in a black neighborhood that there are a lot of people here not wearing yeah. masks. I see know? that too. And also, because Sad. of bad eating habits or because of poverty or whatever, yeah. there is also the weight issue. Right. Okay. Morbid. So uh, I would say that's why they're drying three times as fast, not because we aren't supplying them with the ability to get the shot. Okay. I don't think there's an excuse, at least in my neighborhood, which is primarily a black neighborhood, for anybody in this neighborhood not to get a shot. The, the place where you get the shot is one block that way, okay? Right, right. Uh, and if right. you live in another part of Harlem, it's one block that way, okay? So to say that it's not being made available to them is, is wrong. I think that they have a tendency to not see doctors as often as whites do. I think that there's something, there's some reticence in that. I think you're right. I don't know if it's out of fear or what it's out of, but it's, well, it's a lack of trust, I think. It like could be a lack thing. of trust. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. But all I'm saying is is that there are several other reasons why and and racism has nothing to do with it. Okay? Right. Right. Uh, and our governor is going out of his way to make sure that blacks are being catered to in this whole thing, and he's still not upping the numbers. You know, yeah. So I mean, I, I I when I when I drive around the Bay Area, everybody's got a mask on. Brian probably will concur. Um, and uh, in the Bay Area, I have uh, four black friends, and they've all got their vaccination. And uh, you know, uh, one of them's an emergency room physician. The other three are lay people, and they're like around here, a bit large black community in Oakland. They're lining up at the Coliseum to get their COVID shot. So it may be different in New York, mm -hmm. but in California, they have a different outlook, I guess. I don't know. I don't know why. I, I, I don't have the answers to that. Um, I think your answers are a lot of, lo there's a lot of logic behind your answers, Alex. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Well, I mean, uh -huh. it, it's just a whole bunch of set of circumstances that has nothing to do with lack of ability and lack of, uh, of, of access or anything like that. And I think the governor is barking up a wrong tree, basically because yeah. he's giving a white answer to a black situation. Yeah. And, and, and I'm saying that, no, what you've got to do is to get them to wear masks. You've got to get them, uh, you, you, you've got to encourage them to uh, eat better. You know, I mean, even though... Um, I know it's difficult, but uh, they have a tendency. I mean, if you if uh, you look in our black community here, there are s people here who are morbidly obese at a disproportionate level among blacks than among whites. And that has to do with the lack of access to good food, inexpensive food that's good for you, so on and so forth. But I'm telling you, when I see a black woman weighing 350 pounds, walking down the street without a mask. I go, what are you trying to do, kill yourself? I guess I'll block myself okay. now. <laughs> well, what I'm saying is, hey, look, you know your comorbidity, okay? Absolutely. And so even, Absolutely. Though, even though you've had At your At 300 shirt, pounds, I'm freaked out, so go, let me tell you. But you wear the mask, don't you? Oh, absolutely. Wore it, wore it in March. Yeah. Once yeah. they said that this is in, in the class of stuff as common cold, I said, <clears throat> I had masks, handed them out to my family and friends. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Jeff, you had, Jeff, you had your hand up. Yeah. So, Alex, uh, do you actually talk to these people uh, that are the three hundred and fifty pounders? No, because I don't. I don't want to get yelled at. Okay. You know, I don't want to get yelled or at. Worse. Or worse. Yeah, or worse. I mean, I I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what I do when I walk down the street and somebody's not wearing a mask. Yeah. I put my hand over my face, mm -hmm. giving them an idea that I don't want to get your cooties, okay? Uh, yeah. It doesn't seem to bother very many of them. 
but uh, and occasionally I'll see somebody with it down around their uh, their hair and not a, over the nose, and I'll I'll take mine and go, huh, you know, uh, and and they go, oh, okay, sure, you know, they're okay uh -huh. because they're they're trying to wear a mask, you know. Uh, I, I don't think you know as much as we know about it. And as little as we know about COVID and the shots, mm -hmm. it, it's a it's just a long time before people are going to get in tune. I mean, there's a lot of Caucasians that won't take the shot. Trump twisted everybody's head around about COVID, and there's a lot of Republicans out there that believe he was Absolutely. God or the next thing to it, mm -hmm. and he knew more about science and medicine than anybody else in the world because he said so. Well, Bill Gates has a tracker in the vi in the vaccine. You know, you know about that, right? Yeah, yeah, you can check. yeah. Bill Alex Gates tells is us tracking us all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but I think a lot of that's economics too, right? I mean, you know, the poor neighborhoods have more, you know, McDonald's and fast food dollar meals. Yeah. So easier for them to go and grab a burger right. for the kids. Absolutely, and sodas and stuff. You know, the 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 Seven Up or Seven Eleven. You know, big gulp cups. Yeah. And all that stuff. So I mean, yeah, it's really, it's really but bad. You can't get the, into the those biggest, stores unless you have a mask. Mm. Yeah, but the the biggest thing I and you know this is a discussion, different time. But I mean, the homelessness still. Mm. Man, we drive around here in San Jose, mm. and every overpass you have, you have something. I think we joked the other day about that that two story right. the, in, the, in the yeah. cloverleaf in Fremont. Right. And it's like unbelievable how the cops will just drive right by. And I, I heard a cop from my friend was joking sarcastically saying, oh, we live in beautiful San Jose. And he was making comments, all the homeless people. And it's like, man, wh when when are we going to get back to those kind of conversations? You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, so I mean, amazingly enough, yeah. the homeless are not the big carriers of COVID. Yeah. I, you know, and I don't know. We're I've heard a the, lot of uh, different reasons. We're outside, so, you know. <laughs> Never seen a homeless guy with a mask. I've heard that. <laughs> yeah, well, I have all seen I'm homeless saying with a mask. What, what, but what bothers me about, about, like, our governor, who's a white guy, okay, so he has white guilt, okay, is that he's going, oh, well, here's, we have to, we have to make sure the blacks get it and they have equal opportunity to it and all of that. Yeah. And he's not dealing with the overall sociological reasons that go beyond the simply the fact that they don't have access to the to the to the shots i mean exactly. who doesn't have access to the shots i mean come on who, anybody yeah. here in, in an area where you don't know where to go get your shots all right I, I, and then, I, then I, is he going to feel good that he's given the people the shot and then he walks away again and they still have poor health care they still have poor That's living correct. conditions. They That's still have all these things. He correct. puts that bandaid on it and it looks like a hero. Look at where we're getting all these guys the vaccine. And he walks away from it like he's a hero. You know. The yeah. other thing that yeah. bothers me, that's kind of bothered me, I mentioned this to Steve uh, Stephen uh, Kravitz today when we were talking mm -hmm. with him, that bothers me is that our governor is suddenly going, well, and now we're going to get people with comorbidities and we're adding so-and-so to the list and so-and-so to the list and so-and-so to the list. Hey, I'm 81. What happened to the 75 and above? <laughs> uh, shouldn't we get? Shouldn't we be the first in the pecking order? Then you go to the 65s, you know. So Why? if I call up and I say I'm 81, they go, Oh, well, you go to the head of the line, yeah. you know. But no, they've added all these other people. So now a guy who's got a comorbidity—I think smoking's one of the comorbidities. Yes, not here. You know. Um, really? Wow. Well, I mean, I'm making a joke there, but the, okay. uh, uh, certainly no. uh, uh, obesity is a comorbidity. And, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So my, my friend who, who watches the show all the time in New Jersey, mm -hmm. that's what his problem is right now. He's been signed up and trying to get it, and he has emphysema for different health issues, not from smoking, never smoked, never drank. Mm -hmm. But these people who have smoking and all these other things are going in front of him in line. Yeah. So, I mean... Uh, uh, shouldn't you say, well, wait a minute, once we've taken care of the 75 above, then we'll take care of the 65 and above, and then we'll take care of the this, mm -hmm. and we'll take care of the that, and then we'll get down to the people mm -hmm. with all the comorbidities. Or if you want to push the comorbidities to the front of the line, fine, but at least don't change the pecking order. Mm -hmm. But when you change that pecking order, let's say tomorrow, let's say next uh, a week from su Saturday when we're getting our second shot, I somehow can't make 
that uh, that appointment. Can I reschedule my appointment for the following week? I don't know. No. No way I'll be able to. You know. Um, although they did say they're holding on to your shot for like a week or something. So mm -hmm. the, I guess that is possible. But it's very hard to come up with information so, about that. It says you know, Alex but, Bennett. I, I was big shot. I was a big shot on your needle waiting yeah, for you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I think that Trump stands a better chance of becoming president next week than you missing your shot, Alex. Mm. <laughs> Yeah, that's a snowstorm. <laughs> hey, listen, I don't know that next week I'm not going to get a note saying we've run out. You know, although they say the 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 second doses they uh, they have available. In other Good. words, they the, it's the first dose they're worried about running out of. I don't know why. Yeah, What's I, the I difference? Don't. Biden's trying different. to push the Biden's trying to push the teachers up in line, which I think is a good thing. But they should have started that. You know, they like you're. Teachers, I say, Alex, I would rather see the 75 teachers, and teachers yeah. other than bringing that down. To teachers 65. should have been in the first group with with uh, health care givers. Yes. Yep, I agree. You know, the health care givers were getting their shots. All oh, my doctor got his shot, and everybody else who works with it, it should be so with teachers too. Same yeah. thing. Yeah, we got, well, we're getting our shots. I'm in between shots here in Ohio, so teachers are getting mm -hmm. shots here. They're, yeah. they're even doing yeah. substitutes, Dan. Yeah, I I got a um, good good. I, my, yeah, my uh, the school district I was with was real nice to me, and they wrote a letter on my behalf. Well, on your behalf, how nice! That's nice. Ooh, yeah. yeah, we treat the teachers terribly. Just see this in this how this is going. Mm -hmm. We teach them, we teach them you know the the pay and all this oh, other man. stuff, and even the shots, and we're trusting them with our kids, and we want to get the kids back in. Yeah. And, Oh my God, we're so terrible as a country. Oh so, my! Well, goodness. it's a real mess. Obviously, the whole thing is a mess. Yeah. If I were, if I were to take a picture of just the crowd in the school walking through the hallways, and if I posted that picture on social media, I would be fired immediately because if people from England or even New York or LA saw what was going on here you'd be like what's what are you guys doing i mean we're more spread out than you are so it's a little different but it's still we're not well, so doing a great job originally <laughs> they were going to give people 70 and older right and then they were going to do 65 and older and then 60 and older with right. comorbidities and teachers and they, from one city to the other, they can't decide what they want to do. And that makes it more mess, more confusing and everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I don't know the answer, obviously. I, mean, I don't know. Yeah. Maybe they ought to let Alex run the, the damn thing. He he would kick some ass, I think. But Oh, absolutely. But all I just, saying, it's a I'm, real mess. All, all I'm saying is, is that, yeah, it's a real mess. And then all of a sudden, what you do is you get politically... People politically, like, uh, look, I, I've had a great deal of respect uh, for, for a while with uh, Cuomo, a little Cuomo. less now than I used to have, right. uh, because I think he's handling it poorly now rather than well. Uh, but uh, I, I've had a lot of respect for him. But lately, he's been showing that it's still all nothing but being a political hack in the way they try to get things done, you know? Oh, I'm, uh, I have white guilt, so therefore I'm going to make sure that I know that black people are afraid of doctors, you know, or don't have the same access to health care. Well, this isn't the same access to health care because this is something they're giving out at schools, okay? You know, you just go get the shot at a place near you. This isn't health care where you've got to go to Mount Sinai or you've got to go to some public hospital and you've got to seek it out and you, you don't have insurance. that You don't pay. Insurance doesn't have to cover this. Did you see the Florida governor today? What did he do? Speaking of a mess, DeSantis or whatever his name is, mm -hmm. he he's setting up a uh, pop-up vaccination center this weekend in one of the richest neighborhoods in New York. <laughs> And tell me that that didn't cause a stir in the paper. Wait a minute, he's stuff. starting a pop-up in New York? 
And no, I, I'm Florida. Florida. I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah in, in New York. It's, don't mind me. At my age, I get real forgetful. Listen, knowing that Florida uh, governor, he might set it up in New York. <laughs> he's such an idiot. No, he's setting up this pop-up in a real high-end neighborhood in Florida. And, uh, you know, he's going to vaccinate everybody. He doesn't care as long as they're of legal age to get a vaccination, 16, 18, whatever. And a lot of people are saying, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. That's a rich neighborhood. What's especially, up with that? Especially in, in Florida where old people go to die for crying out loud. Your senior pop, you, I'm sure your senior population in Florida is much larger than it is here in New York City. But there's a lot of Jews with money there. A lot of Jews with money here, too. Uh, okay, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> no, but I mean, if uh, you, 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 you first you take the people who are most wall. at risk of dying from this. Absolutely. Okay? That's old people, people like me. If I get it tomorrow, my chance of dying from it is much larger than even some of the black people out there, okay, who are younger. Um, you know, so... Uh, uh, I should be taken care of before other people. Your risk is higher than my risk. Yeah, I, I, I maybe, maybe I don't know. You know, I mean, well, you, you do you do have a, a major comorbidity there. I, 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 well, I if, I if don't you don't mind that. me being insulting, but but know. but most people that are dying in the hospital are, if you take the the convalescent hospitals out of the picture, people seventy and above. Mm -hmm. And then after that, people with comorbidities. Now, I have a double comorbidity. I'm not only fat, but I've got uh, moderate asthma, which is also another comorbidity. Yep, yep. But if you're a cancer survivor, that makes you a high morbidity. People that have had strokes and have recovered from strokes, yep. that's a comorbid. I mean, they can't make up well, their mind. We got them all over here. <laughs> if you work in healthcare, like Brian, that's a comorbidity. <laughs> My stress. I guess. Did you have any comorbidities, uh, Mr. Lee? Uh, yeah, I've got uh, asthma, and I used to work in healthcare too. You know, yeah. in public health, uh, in yeah. the area of environmental health, but mostly it was chemicals. Oh, we yeah. were sort of the canaries, you know, the you know, hazmat stuff. Yeah, lead poisoning and all that good stuff. But right. when you're young, we're crazy. You know what I mean? We don't think. We just go out there and do it. You know, get our hands uh, wet with all every kind of chemical you can think of, glycols. And, you know, now it's another story. But, hey, uh, Mr. Bennett, 40 mm -hmm. years ago when I was in Nam, we used to spray ourselves with DDT. We didn't care. Just get yeah. the bugs out of our ears. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but all I'm saying is I think it's time for us to uh, – uh, look at this a little more practically and say, okay, we get the m most at-risk people taken care of first. If I mean, I wish we had enough so we didn't even have to make a priority like that. You just lined up and got a shot. You yeah. Know? But we don't have <laughs> nice. that. But I mean, you know, I mean, for instance, uh, Jeff here. Jeff should be should have been in the front of the line from the very beginning. I mean, when he signed up, he shouldn't have had to wait weeks to get it. That's right. All right. You should have just, boom, when can you get down here? Um, uh, I, unfortunately, medicine in this country, the squeaky wheel gets yeah. the oil. And but, so then, I but what happens? I mean, what happens here in New York is they're opening up all these places. They say, oh, we have thousands. We have hundreds of them. Right. We're, we have millions of them, you know. And they don't have any vaccine. But they've got yeah. all these places that if they had could give shots, they could give them in. And I'm going... Shouldn't you just open up enough to take care of the traffic that's needed for the amount that you have? And then when we get more, you open up more places. And then when yep. we get even more, you open up more places. And when we get a lot, then you open up Met Stadium. You open up Yankee Stadium. You know? Uh, but that sounds no. logical to me, you know? Yeah, but, but no. The governor, for just optics, says... We just opened a place up there in the Bronx at y Yankee Stadium. Well, you know, the Bronx is one of the heavy areas for, for uh, infection, okay? Mm -hmm. So that being the case, is putting one in uh, Yankee Stadium, which is in the Bronx, going to help that situation? 
No, it would be better if you found more schools and places near people where they could just walk across the street and get it than to have to drive all the, or take the, the train and get the COVID from the train, take the train to get out to a Yankee Stadium. Just bring it, bring it to their neighborhoods. You don't have to do these yeah. places like Yankee Stadium because the optics look good. You know, and that's is that's oh, where po- that's where politics enters into it. And I don't care what Cuomo says; he's playing politics. You know? I agree with you. And your governor out in California, I don't think he knows what the fuck he's doing. I'll agree with you there too. You know, I mean, I I used to. Li- this is the thing. I like Cuomo, and now I don't like him as much. And I used to think the world of Gavin Newsom, but now I'm not thinking very much of him anymore. No. He's messed it up, too. Yeah. I mean, the, these people who weren't messing it up originally, well, Cuomo messed it up originally and corrected his behavior and then saved lives, okay? Right. But um, now it's coming back to haunt him. And I think he, he's maybe being hit too hard with this whole thing about the nursing homes. I yeah. think he was, going, he was going by the best information at the time. Is what that was all about. So, you know. Did you see where Dr. Fauci won a million dollars? No. Yeah, the. Um, Wait, you going on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? No, um, I'm trying to think of the country of Sweden. Hall, uh, did he get a some, grant or something? Oh, yeah. Where? Did he get a grant? What, did he get a Nobel oh, Peace no, Prize? It was, uh, Nobel like, Prize. Like, like a Nobel Peace Prize. Uh, Nobel but this medical. was in medicine, and yeah. it wasn't the wasn't the Nobel family. It was somebody else. And they give out three, and they gave him one. They gave Al Gore one, too, a number of years ago. But mm-hmm. but they gave him one for his work in uh, COVID and HIV and stuff. It, just, it was just in the news yesterday or the day before. Wow. So it wouldn't be hard to find if you look it up. Wow. Wow. Well, they, you know. they, they blew up uh, Trump's plaza, the Trump plaza and casino in Atlantic City. Really? They have it on- they have it on video. They did it today, I guess, and they had people cheering in the background. Well, they had the win- they had a, they had a contest or something. Oh, that's linked to that one. Uh, the, the, uh, and the winner. No, this one was just today. No, the winner was the guy who's going to pull the plunger. Uh, you know, who's going to flip the switch uh, and bring it down. And I think it was either they were either looking for a donation, or they were looking for just they were having a contest, and the winner got to do it that. off. Yeah. Yeah. So it, uh, according to CNN, Dr. Fauci wins a million dollar prize from Israel oh. for his work on COVID and other diseases. Wow. Good for him. Well, good he for yeah, good it. for him. I mean, I'm getting a little tired of seeing his mug on TV every five minutes. No, but, you know, yeah. you know, but but still, he's done a he's done a good job of informing <laughs> the public. The world looks at him for answers. Yeah. Well, let me put this theme song on here. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> there it is. There it is. Time to get rid of us. Uh, yeah, okay, time time yeah. to dump y'all. Uh, Jack will be doing another show tonight with absolutely nobody because Scott Boddicker's frozen out and Charlie's frozen out. and So maybe some of you guys might think about calling Jack just to give him somebody to talk to, okay? Charlie did on Facebook say that he was okay. Uh, oh, he's okay. It, yeah. Charlie's about, okay? About, yeah, about Charlie. six hours ago. Okay. Yeah, his All right. power's out, but... Yeah. He's, uh, he doesn't have backup batteries. If, if you're listening to us at all, if you're listening to us at all, Charlie, we're thinking about you. Okay? We love you. Thank yeah. you very much, Alan. Thank you very much to our good friend uh, Dan Meyer, Phil's brother. Uh, thanks to Team <laughs> Pfizer, Brian. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, uh, Mr. John Larkin. And James Lee from Hawaii. Good to hear from you again, too. <laughs> Uh, yep. Everybody, yeah. Everybody should give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. Okay, there they go, ladies and gentlemen. Now I'm back to my good camera. <laughs> I don't know what the problem is. I may have to buy another one of these good cameras just for the zoom thing. I don't know, but I'll worry about that another day. Hey, listen, that's it for now. Uh, we'll be back again uh, tomorrow. Uh, Jack Bishop is next with uh, the intersection. Please call him. He needs some callers tonight. And uh, I'll see you tomorrow night, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? And be safe out there. Wear a mask and get a shot.